Peace to the 12. Y'all see the title. Sit down and listen. All right. Sit down and listen. And this is uh, piggybacking off the video I did recently, the one right before this one, which was, which was titled God's Story Has Villains, which was accurate. And most of you brothers and sisters that watched the video, y'all understood what was being spoken. All right. Which is the fact that the Most High is in control of all things. Right. But I had one brother in particular, Jonathan. I don't know if he wants me to put his whole name out there. But Jonathan asked this question, a long comment. And he says, if you how he says Yahweh, which is not his name. If Yahweh is the creator of good and evil, why is he reliable and an accurate representation of what is just, righteous, and holy? You didn't mention Satan since he was the first to sin. You didn't mention that since we have been given free will <laughs> that we choose to what's good or evil. You know, I'm not going to read this whole comment because I'm going to tackle all the points because I, I copied and pasted all the points. So we're going to touch on all the points. So I'm going to end up reading this whole comment anyway. But uh, let's start off with the first comment, right? He says, if, Yah if Yahweh, which his name is Yahweh, if Yahweh is the creator of good and evil, why is he a reliable and accurate representation of what is just, righteous, and holy? Well, he is the creator of good and evil. It's not if. It's not an if. So let's highlight this part. If he is the creator of good and evil. He is the creator of good and evil. Right? And just for a reference, I asked Google. I already knew I was going to get a bug out answer. But I asked Google. And I said, uh, uh, is God responsible for evil? It says no. It says no. The scripture says when God has finished his creation, everything declared very good. So he says no, right? Well, that's not what the scriptures say. And that's why I told you guys in the last video... You got to speak according to what the scriptures say, right? So he says, if, he says, if Yahweh, which his real name is Yahweh, is the creator of good and evil. There's no if. He is the creator of good and evil. It tells you that plainly in Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7 says, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, Yahweh, do all these things. So it's not a question of if. He does. The Most High creates good and evil. He makes peace. He creates evil. He controls the dark. He controls the light. He created the sun and the moon. All right? Nighttime, daytime. Now you go to Amos 3 and 6. Right? It tells you again that there's no evil that's done in the city without the Lord's approval. That's Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord Yahweh hath not done it? Right? So, shall there be evil in the city, and the Lord not done it? Exactly. All right, nothing goes past the eyes of the Lord. Right? Because he's omnipotent. Let's go to Proverbs 16 and 4. The Lord Yahweh hath made all things for himself. Yeah, even the wicked for the day of evil. So, the wicked... For the day of evil were made by the Lord for himself, by himself. Well, look, at, the Lord has made all things for himself. And that includes the wicked for the day of evil. I don't know how you get around that. So there is no if. There is no if. And I'm going to get another example of the Most High bringing evil upon people. And I'm also going to explain why he does so. Why he does these things. You go to Joshua 23 and 15. Right? This is the book of Joshua 23 and 15. Let's see if I'm recording. Bet. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord Yahweh your God promised you. Now watch this. Check this out. So shall the Lord Yahweh bring upon you all evil things. So who brings upon the evil things? The Lord. Until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord Yahweh your God hath given you. That's plain. Who brings the evil things? The Lord. Let's get another example. Judges chapter 2 verse 14. Which reads. And the anger of the Lord Yahweh was hot against Israel. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. Wait. Who delivered Israel into the hands of the spoilers? Who did that? The Lord. Why? He was angry. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about. So that they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Now check this out. Verse 15. Judges 2 and 15. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord 
Yahweh was against them for what? For evil. All right. As the Lord Yahweh had said, and as the Lord Yahweh had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Right. So once again, it's not a question of if. The hand of the Lord was against them for evil. Let's go to 1 Kings 9 and 9. And they shall answer because they forsook the Lord Yahweh their God who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have taken a hold upon other gods and have worshipped them and served them. So that's telling you right there. Because our people were in idolatry and want to serve other gods, guess what? Therefore hath the Lord Yahweh brought upon them all this evil. Who brought upon them all this evil? The Lord. Right? The Lord. So if Yahweh, if Yahweh is the creator of good and evil, he is the creator of good and evil. There's no if. Right? As a matter of fact, everyone lives and dies because God says so. That's in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 6. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. So anybody that's dead, the Most High God killed him. Anybody that's alive, the Most High God allows them to live. The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord Yahweh maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord Yahweh's and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. Now check this out. For by strength shall no man prevail. So it's not by strength that a man prevails. It's not by a man's will that he prevails. It's by Yahweh by Shemiah was shy, right? If the Most High wants to cut you down, you're cut down. That's plain, right? And I know I'm, I'm, I'm getting uh, excited, but this is no ill will. This is no ill will to the brother. I'm just edifying, right? So there is no question of if, right? Um, What's the next point? Do I have any more on that? Oh, I'll also tell you guys why God brings evil to Israel and why it's justified. I already kind of proved, proved that earlier with uh, with uh, 1 Kings 9 and 9, but we'll get some more on that. So you go to Daniel chapter 9, verse 11. It tells you why the Most High God brings evil to Israel and why it's justified. So this is Judges, or this is Daniel chapter 9, verse 11, which reads, Yeah, all Israel have transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. Because, you got to understand, in the law it was written a blessing and a curse. If we, do the, if we do the Lord's commandments and we hearken on to the Lord our God, right? Then we will be blessed. And if we don't, then we'll be cursed. So the reason we face these curses is simple. We disobey the Lord our creator, all right, whose name is Yahweh. Now, now check this out. And he hath confirmed his words which he spake against us and against our judges that judged us. Now what did he do? By bringing upon us a great evil. Now who did that? The Most High. For under the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem. Which means what? We face more atrocities than any other nation. Right? Like we got these damn devils who like to try to come to us and be like, Oh well we've all been through it. You know the Irish did this and these guys went through this. There is no nation... That has gone through what the people of Jerusalem have gone through. That's facts. Right? Anyway, as it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord Yahweh our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Right? So we have to turn away from our iniquities and understand the truth. We have to hearken on to the scriptures. What to do or what not to do. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. Now what did it say? Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us. The evil was brought upon us, sanctioned by the Lord. Right? For disobedience. For the Lord Yahweh our God is righteous. So what? So he brings evil upon us. But guess what? The Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he doeth. For it, we obey not his voice. So he's righteous for doing so. Right? Which brings me to the next question he made. Uh, why is he a reliable and accurate representation of what is just and righteous and holy? Because the most I told you, if you want the blessings, you'll do what he says. And if you don't want the bless, or if you want the curses, then you'll disobey him. And that's even speaking to the children of Israel. That's who the law was given to under Moses, right? So, uh, where are we at? Anything else I got on that? 
Yeah, let's prove that in Deuteronomy 30 and 19, the blessing and the curse. That's Deuteronomy 30 and 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thy, thy, thou and thy seed may live. So we have life and death before us, right? What's the life? The law, statutes, and commandments, all right? Also, believe it upon you, how shy, right? Who is the word of God? Like the scriptures is what? The word of God. Now, when we go to Baruch 4 and 1, it tells you the law is good and that the law is life. Let's go to Baruch chapter 4, verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. So if you leave the law, you die, period. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Right? So through the law, you're, the, that's where you get the good success. That's where you have life. Right? You have a long life. Ultimately, the people that keep the law to its fullness, uh, uh, pursuant to the new covenant, those people are made immortal. Right? Because sin is what truly causes death. But um, let's get another scripture to say it's a long life. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. See that? So that's for that long life, length of days. For what? The commandments. Don't forget the law. Right? Proverbs 3 and 18 tells you that it's the commandments is a tree of life proverbs 3 and 18 same chapter she is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy is everyone that retaineth her right so that's the tree of life you have people out there searching for the tree of life the tree of life is found in the scriptures right um and see he asked me how to how does that make him righteous uh let me go back why is he a reliable and accurate representation of what just and righteous and holy is? Well, number one, because he he created what is righteous. Just like he created what is unrighteous. How would you be able to understand what is evil if you didn't know what good was? Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, but, you know, let's get into that some more. I think I got more on that. Um, let's see. Because God has something known as righteous anger. Right? So he can do evil. He can put evil upon somebody righteously we read that earlier where it said uh the lord washed upon the evil and brought it upon us that was in daniel 9 and 14 and why did he do that for we obeyed not his voice so he so our god was righteous in all his works so he has something known as righteous anger which is really known as indignation indignation god has something known as indignation indignation is righteous or moral anger right so that's it Right, and this is indignation is righteous or more anger. In the Bible, indignation often refers to God's wrath against sin or sinful activity. So, is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. You can read about that in Romans chapter nine, and we're gonna start at verse eleven. It's Romans chapter nine, verse eleven. For the children not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to the election might stand, not of works, but of Him that calleth. He's talking about Jacob and Esau. They haven't done any good or evil yet, but their paths were already written out. That's why they told her, uh, Rebecca what? In the womb. Two nations are in, the, in thy womb. All right? Two different people. All right? And the elder shall serve the younger. Their destiny was already plotted out, which cuts free will. Right? Their destiny was already plotted out because the election of God, whatever he wanted to happen, it was going to happen. Right? We'll touch on that later. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So the most high God loved Jacob. He hated Esau. Now check this out. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Right? So God forbid there is no unrighteousness with God. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Now check this out. This is another cut on free will. So then it is not of him that willeth. So it's not a free will. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. That's right. Right? Um, and let me go to the next part. So that was that. Let's keep going. He says, you didn't mention Satan, 
since he was the first to sin and you didn't mention that since we have been given free will that we can choose to what's good or evil <laughs> i just proved that we don't have free will but let's go into that even further i'm, I'm gonna touch on satan right um but let's touch on sin first he said first to sin what is that uh well sin is transgression against the law all right we can prove that by going to first john three and four sin is the transgression of the law whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law for sin is the transgression of the law right so that's what sin is okay now transgression of the law what that really means is uh not listening to the lord our god on what he said to do and what not to do right so he said satan was the first to sin uh let's talk let's talk about satan <laughs> he said i didn't mention satan why didn't i mention satan because satan works satan or let me say this all angels work for the most high i know that goes over a lot of people's heads but i'm gonna prove it right now it says you didn't mention satan all right let's let's get into that right let's talk about satan Satan and all evil spirits work for the most high God. Let's prove it. Right? Uh, first, we'll go to Numbers 16 and verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? Numbers 27 and 16. Let the Lord Yahweh, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So the most high is God of all spirits. In Hebrews 12 and 9, it tells you he's the father of spirits. This is Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which, which corrected us. If we gave them reverence, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? So one of the titles of the Most High is the Father of spirits. It's like one of his titles is the Lord of hosts, right? Uh, the Most High is another title, um, but his name is once again Yahweh. Now I said that Satan and all evil spirits were for the Most High. Can I prove that? Of course I can. Let's go to Judges 9 and 23. Let's prove that. Judges 9 and 23. Then God sent an evil spirit. Who sent it? God sent an evil spirit. Between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. So the Most High God sent that evil spirit. Alright? 1 Samuel 16 and 14. But the spirit of the Lord Yahweh departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the lord troubled him so the evil spirit was from who it was from the lord yahweh right it tells you that again in 16 and 15 and 16 and 16 evil spirit from god evil spirit from god is upon thee god sent that right uh uh first samuel 18 and 18 and 10 and it came to pass on the morrow that the evil spirit from god came upon saul and he prophesied in the midst of the house and David played with his hand as at other times. And there was a javelin in Saul's hand. So the evil spirit was from God. So I told you what. Satan and all evil spirits work for the most high. Because who sent them? Right? And also, when you go, that means when you go to Acts 19 and 15. And it says, the evil spirit answered and said, How shall I know? And Paul I know, but who are ye? We go, And then it says, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them. So, they, they, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Right? So when you read about the evil spirit in Acts, well, we can go back to the precepts. Through the precepts, we get understanding. We know that an evil spirit is sent from who? God. That's all in there. Evil spirit from God. Evil spirit from God. Evil spirit from God. God sent an evil spirit. So that evil spirit from Acts 19, guess who sent that? Yeah, you guessed it. The Most High. Let's get another scripture proving that. That the Most High controls the evil angels. All right. Satan and all evil spirits. Let's, let's keep going. Let's go to Psalms 78 and 49. Let me get a drink of water real fast. This Psalm 78 and 49. Right? He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. So what did he do? He sent evil angels among them. See that? Simple, sending evil angels among them, right? Hebrews 1 and 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. I mentioned that because what? He's the father of spirits, right? That's why the angels are, just like the Israelites, are known as who? The sons of God. 
Uh, let's get another thing that God sends an angel to do evil. First Chronicles 21 and 15. And God sent an angel onto Jerusalem to destroy it. Who did that? God sent it. And he and as he was destroying, the Lord Yahweh beheld, and he repented him of the evil, and said to the angel that destroyed it, Is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Oman, of Ornan the Jebusite. So who sent the angel to do evil to Jerusalem? God sent him. And who told him to stop? Who told him that that was enough? God called it off. Right? The Most High. You go to 2 Samuel 24, 16. Right? And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord Yahweh repented him of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is enough. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord Yahweh was by the threshing place of Aranah the Jebusite. So, once again, he called the hit. Then he called it off, right? And now, we that was evil spirits, right? We got the evil spirits. We got evil angels. Now, let's go to lying spirits, right? And I touched on this in another video. I'm just going to this uh, for a reminder, all right, a refresher of your memory. God sends a lying spirit as well. Let's go to 1 Kings 22 and 22. And the Lord Yahweh said unto him, Wherewith, and he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lion spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So that's not a free will, because he told the angel that he was going to go, and he was going to persuade him, and he was going to be successful. Right? Then you go to 1 Kings 22 and 23. It says, The Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. Right? 2 Chronicles 18 and 12. It says, The Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. So that's the same thing with a lion spirit. Most high pour upon a man the spirit of deep sleep. That's Isaiah 29 and 19. For the Lord Yahweh hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets, your rulers, the seers hath he covered. The Lord poured upon them the spirit of deep sleep. Right? See that? Um, he put he also mingles perverse spirits. Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord Yahweh hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Right? And what's a perverse spirit? A distorting, a warped, a perverting spirit. Who did that? The Lord Yahweh hath mingled a perverse spirit. So he does that. All right? You go to Syrac, Syrac, also known as Ecclesiasticus 39 to 28. It reads. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Who made them? The father of spirits, the most high, right? There be spirits that are created for vengeance that lay on sore strokes in destruction. We just got an example of destruction in 1 Chronicles 21, 15 and 24, 16, when Angel went and went to uh, threshing in Jerusalem, Right? And then it says, uh, there, let me read that again. Syrac 39, 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the, wrath, the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment. Who? The spirits. And that proves that the spirits follow his commandments. They shall rejoice in his commandment, and they shall be ready upon the earth when need is, and when their time has come, they shall not transgress his word. So these spirits don't transgress his word, right? So I mentioned evil spirits, lying spirits, perverse spirits, spirit of deep sleep, right? And yes, Satan is also controlled by the Most High, just like any other spirit. I can prove that by going to Job chapter 1, verse 6, right? This is, uh, I'll just read it all, I guess. Um, this is Job chapter 1, verse 6. Which reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh, and Satan came also among them. So the sons of God, talking about the angels in this context, they present themselves before the Most High Yahweh, and guess who was among them? Satan, right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So now he's conversating with Satan. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none, there is none like him in the earth, 
a perfect and an upright man, one that fears God and issue with evil. Right? Then answer, then Satan answered the Lord, Yahweh, and said, Doth Job fear God for not? Hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the, in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. Now check this out. Verse 12. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So just like he gave the go for that lion spirit, to be a lion spirit in the mouth of the prophets, he sent Satan, because he said what? The Lord said unto Satan, All that he hath is in thy power. All right, but you couldn't put your forth on him himself. So that proves right there that he gave Satan the green light. Once again, he controls the light and the darkness, like it tells you in Isaiah 45 and 7. Right? So, guess what happened after that? His sons and daughters were uh, unalive. And then it tells you the fire of God was falling from heaven. You can read the rest of the account. Right? But the point is, the Most High stamped and sanctioned the hit. Right? And they communicate again in Job, the second chapter. This Job 2 and 1. So, uh, Satan was responsible for Job losing his health. And once again, he was sent by who? The Most High. Job 2 and 1. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord Yahweh. And Satan came also among them to, prevent, pre, to present himself before the Lord. So Satan came again, right, with the rest of the sons of God. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and for walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and issueth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity? Although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord Yahweh and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Satan, Right? So God told Satan what? Behold, he's in thy hand, but save his life. So Satan couldn't act without getting permission from the Most High God. That's another example right there. So. Went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord Yahweh and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot onto his crown. Right? So that's another example of the Most High stamping it. Right? And that also proves that Satan follows orders, just like every other angel. You can, you can, you can learn about that in Psalms 103 and 20, which reads, Bless the Lord Yahweh, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, Hearkening unto the voice of his word. So the angels do the commandments of the Most High God. They hearken to his voice. They listen. Right? That's why the Lord said on the scene, Behold, he's in thy hand, but save his life. He had to listen to the Most High. Right? So that was that. Uh, let's keep going. Um, and you didn't mention that we have been given free will that we can choose to do what's good and evil. Uh, no. <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's, let's touch on that, though. Let's touch on that. Evil came into our being by disobedience, the pride of life, and the illegitimate way to obtain knowledge due to selfishness, right? So do we have free will? I've done a video on it. You can check it out. I think I've done several videos on it. I did a video called Life is Scripted. I did another video titled The Lie of Free Will. But we'll touch on it briefly for this video. Um, let's go to it. Let's get to it. Um... First of all, evil was sown in man from the beginning. Let's prove that. Second Genesis 4 and 30. For the grain of evil seed has been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. Second Genesis 4 and 30. And how much ungodliness hath it brought unto this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth unto the time of threshing come? Right? So for that's not threshing come. That's talking about judgment day. It says the grain of evil seed was sown in Adam from the beginning. Right? Um, and let's prove that certain people were already made to be wicked. Right, you can, you can read about that in uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. I'll prove that right now, that people, there are people that were made to be wicked, people that were made to be the villain. All right, like Esau, he's made to be our villain. He's our top op, right? But uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. This is talking about the Canaanites. So it says, For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things, therefore chastenest thou them by little and little that offend, 
and warnest them by putting them in remembrance wherein they have offended that leaving their leaving their wickedness they may believe on thee O Lord right for it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers both those old inhabitants of thy holy land now who are the old inhabitants of the holy land the Canaanites right whom thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcrafts and wicked sacrifice so the most I hated the Canaanites right now we go to verse 12 and 10 it tells you that they were always going to be like that, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 10. But executing thy judgments upon them by little and little, thou gavest them place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation and that their malice was bred in them. All right, so they were bred to be malignant and that their cogitation would never be changed. What does cogitation mean? Their thoughts, their study, their meditation, their contemplation, their pondering, right? Their thought process was never going to be changed. And the Most High knew that. Verse 11. Now check this out. For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. So the Canaanites were a cursed seed from the beginning. All right. Just like the Edomites are. It tells you the Edomites are called the, the people of my curse. I think that's what Isaiah 34. Brother can put that in the comment section. But um, neither didst thou for fear of any man give them pardon for those things wherein they sinned. All right. So they were a curse seed from the beginning. Um, and let's prove that people can be born to be wicked. Psalms 58 and 3. Right? Psalms 58 and 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Other versions. the wit, These wicked people are born sinners. Even from birth the wicked go astray. Right? So they were born doing that. Alright? That goes back to Romans 9. Uh, what was it 10 or was it 11 when he said uh for the children not uh not for the children not yet being born neither have done good or evil right that the election of god could stand paraphrasing is exactly right people are born to, to fulfill a certain purpose all right in the same way that the wicked were born sinners you have some people born to be prophets that's jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 then the word of the lord came unto me saying before i formed thee in the belly i knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet unto the nations. Right? So Jeremiah was created. He was born to be a prophet. Before he was even born, he was born to be a prophet. Right? He had no free will in that. Free will is a damn illusion anyway. Let's prove that through the scriptures. Free will is an illusion. We all follow God's plan. Right? Like I told you in the last video, this is the most highest movie. All right? Now you got something known as a free will offering, but it's not truly free will because the people that were going to offer, they were, they were going to do it because it was part of God's plan. And let's prove that free will is an illusion according to the scriptures. Like I said, I've done longer lessons on this topic. But let's go to Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's goings are of the Lord Yahweh. How can a man then understand his way? So man's goings are totally of the Lord. Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directed his steps. So a man might think in his mind that he did something just because he thought about it. But ultimately, right? So like you, let me fix that. But ultimately, the Lord directed his steps. Let's go to Isaiah 64 and 8. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay. All right? And thou art our potter, and we are all the works of thy hand. Right? So the Most High made us this, right? Like, for example, our height. A brother can't say, oh, I want to be 6'5". You know, if you're born 5'6", you're born 5'6", brother. You know? He was born that way. Ecclesiastes 33 and 13. As the clay is in the potter's hand to fashion it at his pleasure, so man is in the, hand, in the hand of him that made him to render to them liketh him best. That cuts, destroys free will. All right? Because we know that God is the father and, he, and we are his clay. And as in his hand, he fashions us to do whatever he wants us to do. And man is in the hand of him that made him, which would be we're in the hand of God, and to render them as he liketh him best. So he gives us the portion that he thinks that we deserve. Why? Because he created us. All right? When people are making play, the play can become a pot. The clay can become a, a bowl, a, a plate. And the, and the, and the plate, and the, and the plate, and the clay plate can't say, wait, I want it to be a bowl. You made a mistake. It'll work like that. Right? Um. And that's the text that in Romans 9 and uh, 20. Um. Actually, I'm going to start at 19 to prove again. Free will is, is not a thing, right? 
Romans 9 and 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? You can't resist the will of the Most High. Nay, but O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing form say to him that formed it? Why hast thou made me thus? And the answer is no, you can't. Man. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So most I can make a vessel of honor, he can make a dishonorable vessel. Again, uh, so man is in the hand of him that made him to render his enemies like his best. Right? I told you that in Daniel 2 and 20. Most high, most high, the people that understand these scriptures, the most high gave them the spirit to be able to understand it. Daniel 2 and 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, right? For wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Who does that? The Most High kills the kings, and he sets up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So the people that understand these scriptures, the Most High allowed them to do it. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. So the Most High knows what's in the darkness, and he has the light. He's in control of the light. I thank thee, I praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Right? So it has to be revealed unto you to the mo from the Most High. Alright? Um... And I'll give you one example of it not being free will and that our lots were planned out and that the Most High already has this movie planned out. We're just all playing our role. Let's get this one example. I use this all the time uh, when, I'm, when I'm teaching somebody. Um, Exodus 4 and 18. Now, this is an example of it being a script, a movie that has to play out. This Exodus 4 and 18, right? Pay attention. And Moses went and returned to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said unto him, Let me go, I pray thee, and return unto my brethren, which are in Egypt, and see whether they be yet alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. Now check this out. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses and Midian, Go return into Egypt, for all the, the men are dead which sought thy life. Now check this out. And Moses took his wife and his sons and set them upon an ass, and he returned to the land of Egypt when Moses took the rod of God in his hand. Now watch this. This is important. Verse 21. Exodus 4 and 21. And the Lord Yahweh said unto Moses, When thou goest, so when thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But Now check this out. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Who's going to harden his heart? The Most High, right? The Most High hardened Pharaoh's heart, right? So let's go back to this comment. Where was it at? Let's go back to the comment. So that pretty much answered that. Good and evil, we answered that. Um, he's hitting the wrong buttons. It's locked you. Um, we kind of answered that. Um... He says, yes, I agree. Yahweh does give some people up to a delusion because the individual has an unwillingness to seek after the truth. Well, the only reason he can't seek after the truth is the Most High didn't want him to understand. I broke that down in Daniel 2 and 20 on down. All right. That's why he was unwilling. Right. Because he wasn't predestinated to understand it. To seek after the truth, virtue, purity, and right based on their own understanding. Well, no, you don't get the understanding. Right. You can't. Like, like uh, I remember Naquam used to say this from uh, WFI. He used to say, uh, he probably still says it. He says, uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, force our way into this truth. It was given to us. Well, again, Daniel 2 and 21. Uh, Most high giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So it has to be given to you. Just like the Holy Spirit has to be given to you by God. You can't just get the Holy Spirit. Dude can't just be, <laughs> dude can't just do a semicircle and say, ah, oh, Give me the Holy Spirit. It don't work like that, man. All right. Um, uh, we all have this issue, which is sin, but that's why Jesus Christ, his name is Yahushua Mashiach, came not only to be the atonement for sins, but to show how to be human and live a life that is holy and acceptable to Yahweh. We can't do without the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, you can't free will the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be given to you by God. Let's prove that. Let's prove that. 
Well, let's prove that Christ died for the sins of Israel real quick. Acts 5 and 30. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So that was for Israel. It says that again, Matthew 1 and 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, so she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Yahweh Shai, for he shall save his people from their sins. His people are who? Israel. Uh, Luke 1 and 68 as well. It says, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, who are his people, the Israelites. And hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. That we should be saved from our enemies. Who are our enemies? We go to read Nehemiah 5 and 9. Our enemies are the other nations. That's who we're going to be saved from. All right? That's why a lot of people don't even understand what salvation is. Salvation is us being saved from our enemies. We're in the midst of our enemies in all these different lands. And from the hand of all them that hate us. All right? The heathens. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. The holy covenant was, was, was with Israel. You go to Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The new covenant, as well as the old covenant, was for the house of Israel and the house of Judah, the Israelites. Um, but anyway, so uh, what else is there? And yeah, the world, people quote John three sixteen. the world is talking about is the world of Israel. All right, I'll just get that as well. Uh, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right, the world that he's talking about is the world of Israel. Let's prove that. Isaiah 45 and 17, but Israel shall be saved. Who's going to be saved? Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. So Israel is who's saved and that's that world without end. Hebrews 1 and 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his sons, whom hath he appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. And it's not talking about him making the worlds being. He's, he's not talking about he made down Namek and Nibiru and um, <laughs> you know, it's not what's talking about. The world's talking about the ages, right? And the last age will be the millennial reign age, which is really the forever age of the Israelites. Another video for the day. But, um, Going circling back to what I said, I wanted to prove that because he mentioned something about our sins. Um, well, yeah, Yahusha died for the nation of Israel, and it says we can't we can't do without the Holy Spirit. You can't free will yourself into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has to be given to you, right? Let's prove that. Um, Acts fifteen and eight, and God which knoweth the hearts bear the witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as He did unto us. So God has to give you the Holy Spirit. Um. Romans 5 and 5 and hope making not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. You have to be given the Holy Spirit. Right? Um Acts, Acts 5 and 32. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. So the most high God has to give you the Holy Spirit. Um First Thessalonians 4 and 8, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So God has to give you the Holy Spirit. You can't free will yourself into the Holy Spirit, man. That's to be given to you. All right. An example of that is Paul. Remember, Paul was persecuting the men of Yahweh Shai, but he was given the Holy Spirit to become an apostle. All right. Um, and the works. Wait, is there something else he had to say? Why do I have this here? Um. One second. To give an inaccurate account of Yahweh's nature, his name Yahweh, is just a grievance as any other sin because of the process. You not only betray your fellow man in the process to promote Yahweh in such a manner. I just got all the scriptures proven that the Most High is in control of good and evil. I already proved that. And let me tell you this also. Uh, the nature of God, all right, we cannot comprehend how deep the Most High goes. That's uh, Job 37 and 5. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. So we can't even comprehend the Most High like that, man. Right? Let's get another example of that. Isaiah 55 and 8. 
For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. So you can't even begin to imagine even a fraction of the true thought process that goes in uh, with the Most High. Now that being said, now that being said, we do know certain things that the God that our that our God, the Most High Yahweh, possesses. We know that God loves and hates. All right, Malachi one and two proves that. Uh, I have loved you, saith the Lord Yahweh. Yet you say, "Where is thou loved us?" Was not Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord Yahweh. Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I laid his mountains and his heritage waste, and the dragons of the wilderness. You got people that say it's just talking about Esau. No, because he laid his heritage waste as well. It's talking about the Edomites. Period. And God hates because you can go to Proverbs six and sixteen, and it says, "These six things doth the Lord hate." Yes, yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. So God has love, all right, and He hates, and uh, He uh, judges righteous, right? He's angry. Our God is angry. It says that in Psalm seven and eleven. God judges the righteous, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So God is angry with the wicked every day. So that shows you that God has anger. He has love. He has hate. Uh, tells you that uh, the Lord is a jealous God in Exodus 20 and 5, Exodus 34 and 14 on, and all these other scriptures. You know, so that's that. And I think we're going to close out on that, man. I just wanted to answer all the questions. You know, I think I answered most of them. And with that, hopefully that was edifying to you, brothers, those that were meant to receive it. And with that, I say peace to the 12. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and the Most High, whose name is really Yahweh. In the name of his only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh is the David Heavenly Father, who is commonly known as God, and Yahweh Shai is the Savior of the nation of Israel, who is commonly known as Jesus Christ. I want to say Shalom, which means peace to you people listening and learning. Your brother's doing this work in truth and sincerity. And to your been doing this thing with phobia, man. Hopefully that clears some things up. Sometimes you just got to sit down and listen, man. All right? And you got to get your understanding through the scriptures, not through man-taught doctrines. I'm out. Peace.